the trestle, the bridge that sat in Gosstown. It was built in 1850, and it was a landmark. It was, uh, it was something that uh, everybody could relate to. And we lost that bridge in 1976. And it's been very dear to so many people uh, that are still talking about it to this day. And uh, do you remember? And uh, everybody has a story to share about it. So we thought we'd bring everybody together, make it part of, of tonight's potluck dinner, and, uh, and reminisce about the, the, the old bridge. And we're going to talk uh, not only amongst ourselves about what we remember, but we've got a guest speaker, uh, uh, Dick Fletcher, who was a Gosstown resident. And he was the fire chief back there in 1976, and he was one of the first ones, if not the first one, to respond that day. So he definitely has uh, some memories, brought some pictures in. We want everybody to enjoy uh, after the, a little later on, uh, walk around up here, check out the pictures. And, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna start out with the, with the uh, slideshow. Then we're gonna have Dick come up, and we're gonna talk with Dick, ask him a few questions, and have him uh, share what he remembers of that day. And then we're going to have a question and answer, uh, a little survey amongst ourselves, and uh, have a little fun night of it. So that's uh, what we've got in store. And for those of you uh, who don't, all uh, friend, um, we've got um, Jennifer. Well, Jennifer, Jennifer's been working real hard with this, and I want everybody uh, when she comes out, I'd like to give her a little hand because she's been putting her heart and soul in this together. Hey, Jennifer! Hey, Jennifer! Yes, Jennifer. Uh, Thank you. Uh, okay. So we're going to get the slideshow. If um, we're going to need somebody to hit the light, we'll. Uh,
young fellow right there. That's the, that's the boy who rescued the sign that, was, that came off of the trestle. That's him with his brother and his friend Chris McLaughlin. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you the rest of that story the, um, if you want to get the lights. In 2005, the young gentleman who, well, at the time he was a young boy, he rescued that sign. He came here to visit the Historical Society with his children. He was then 52 years old, and he wanted to share his story of what went on, what he felt that day. <clears throat> and he uh, described it as initially he believed the fire department was going to save our, our bridge. And he, um, they, weren't, they weren't worried because that's what firemen do. But then it got to a point where they knew it was out of control. <clears throat> and uh, so one of the brothers just had that instinct in him that he wanted to say, preserve something. And he, when he saw the sign there, and he, he actually gave thought to going up and trying to pull it, up, pull it off. And there was no way he was going to get close to that. So when it crashed, he kept his eye on it, and he followed it. And he tells a story, and the story, it's up there uh, by the Gosstown sign, and he tells a story of how he followed that sign all the way to the dam, and he kept an eye on it. And there was so much debris in the water that he, he was like, to keep his eye on it and walk, and that was him. And Eleanor Corey had caught a picture uh, you know, of that young man keeping an eye on the sign. The sign made its, uh, made its way right down to the dam, and so he was ready to go down and retrieve it, and it got hung up right on the edge of the dam. And it sat there and sat there teetering for, he said, about 20 minutes to a half an hour. And, but he was determined to get that sign. And finally, a big, a big piece of debris came down, bumped the sign, and over it went. And him and his brother and his buddy went down over and retrieved it out of the pools of water down over the dam. And they brought it uh, back to the main street. And he tells the story how the, the police immediately took it from them. He said, yeah, <laughs> yeah we are we're launching an investigation here. We, we're going to find out what happened. So there was evidence. And they took their sign. Of course, they felt they worked pretty hard for it. And uh, they were determined to get it back. And they did. A couple weeks later, they got it back from the, uh, the police department. And they had it in their room on Church Street, or Summer Street. And uh, they were pretty proud of that. And then finally one day, you know, their dad said, that, that really needs to go to the Historical Society. And uh, they, they finally agreed, and uh, they gave it to the Historical Society. And we still have it here to this day. It's right back there. And, um, and so uh, that's how the story goes. And he shares it in that long letter, because he wanted the, his story to be told. So, and not many people have read that letter or nobody. We enlarged it, Jen and I, and we're going to get it framed so we can hang it next to the Gosstown sign. So that's a little bit about that. John Leonard and his brother Doug Leonard and Chris McLaughlin, those are our heroes who <laughs> saved yeah. a piece of the river. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna, we're gonna put the screen up and we're gonna get Dick up here and we're gonna, we're gonna pick his brain a little bit, see what he remembers about that day. And I served for 40 years in the fire department. <clears throat> 22 of them were, were uh, fire chiefs. The bridge, to me, I grew up around the bridge because I lived right next to it all the time as a, as a young, young kid growing up. And we played in the bridge. Uh, my father had a garage right there where the bridge insurance agency is now. And, uh, I lived in the house next to it, but I also lived in the house where the Catholic Church was. And the Catholic Church, right behind it, there was where the railroad is. And I can remember at nights, in the wintertime, one night especially, it had snowed probably two and a half feet. 
And I can remember hearing the train come at midnight almost. It came up the track. And when it got to the crossing going down to the, the factory there, it always blew its horn. And I looked out the window, and the front of the train had a great big monstrous plow on it with big wings. And it was plowing as it went. And so it, it was, it was a, a good thing for Gostown because it brought coal, it brought green. And before my time, you know, it brought passengers, and they went beyond Gostown, up through New Boston, up through where. Uh, so when something like that happens and you're aware of it, you know, it kind of, what can I do to stop this fire? That's, this is what goes through your mind. One of the things that, that uh, when I got there, you saw the pictures of the bridge burning, and I brought some pictures that Peter Stanhope took. And, and there's a couple there where the, the fire was boiling right out of the top part of the, the bridge, uh, both ends. And I got there from the fire station. The fire had been going quite a while. It had to be to go, be going, be, be burning like it was. And at the same time I got there, I met Peter Jenkins, who was the deputy fire chief. Uh, at the time, and that's that's the picture right there in the middle that I brought down with me that I have hanging on the wall at home. Peter's not with us anymore, but I met him on the bridge. The trucks hadn't even got there yet, and we decided, you know, it was too late to save the bridge. We had to worry about the buildings around the bridge. For instance, the Burns Insurance Agency, which is right next to it. Mr. Peabody's here tonight. Yeah, I was there. And, and I, yeah. I never knew that Peter went in and talked to you. Oh, yeah. He came in and told me to get the house. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read Doug's ghost story, and Doug had interviewed me, and he interviewed Pete, and he interviewed you. Yeah. And uh, it told about how. He came in and told you you'd have to leave and you wanted the key. Oh, you yeah, had to go get the key. And they he said he just seat. forgot about that and he yeah. went yeah. opened the door anyways. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, How true that is. Uh, it's absolutely true. I said, well, I'll get the key. He wanted to go upstairs to get upstairs and he didn't get up there. So I said, okay, I'll get the key. Because you can only get up on the outside right. of, of the building from the on the end. It was and rude. he said, I don't need the key. And next thing I know, bam. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the at that point in time, your building was, was actually smoking. Yeah. Oh, and there was a, some windows that were broken. Yeah. And his his uh, his theory was he was going to get hose lines up the stairway on the inside to, to, to fight the fire if it got into the building, you know? Yeah. And uh, at the same time, I, I had set up engine two, which uh, is the one on the bridge, and we had a big deck gun, and it was the easiest way to get water on it, try to cool things down. Bert Pepin was, came yeah. shortly after, and he ran that gun, and he put it on your building first yeah, to cool I remember it down. That. Yeah. And uh, at, the, at that time, I was over in front of Henry Hunter's barbershop, and I was I was down on my knees with my helmet and the, and the shield down, and it was so hot my my helmet shield was starting to melt. But I was calling for help. <laughs> I always said it's, it's easy to call for help, and then you can blame it on somebody else too. <laughs> but anyways, I was calling for help. I called Manchester. I called where? I called New Boston. And most of them people came in and covered our stations, except the Manchester one. When they came in, they were a little later. And I had them lay lines from the hydrant in front of the Catholic Church down back of your building. But at the same time, we had people getting on the roofs of your building, house pharmacy, and, and Bill's Golf across the street there. The siding was melting. And, and we had laid a line from the hydrant up by the town hall down there to another truck. And they started working to cool that down. Uh, it was going, it had been going for quite a while. And it's, it's hard to believe that a fire would get that headway right in the middle of town, you know, at that time of the day. But like you, Bill, you right behind you and you didn't even know it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, That's what I, happens many times. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Uh, 
But anyways, it had all the traffic blocked off going through town. Uh, the, the police department was was diverting the traffic around the other way. I'm not sure. But in in Doug Gold's story there, uh, it's it's amazing the things that he found out that I didn't even know about. You know, when reading his story, I said, "Oh, I didn't know about that." <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, it was about a good hour and a half. A good hour and a half before we actually got everything under control, and then. As you can look at that bridge, it, the bridge didn't burn all up and fall in. It toppled over, you know. And the tracks, if you looked at, at some, there's a picture there, a little picture there that Peter took, and there was a, the track was all buckled coming out of the bridge. That's how hot it was. Them tracks are big and heavy. In fact, Jim got one right there, part of it. It takes a lot to, you know, down on the ground to, uh, a lot of heat to whop that, <laughs> believe, it, believe it. And uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, the bridge was wide open from the bottom to the top. And once the fire got going in there, it, the outside boards were like a half inch and they were dry. They'd been there for years, you know, the sun, the weather, and they were dry, so that's really what burned off the roof and the sides. The rest of that was the way the construction was. They had a big, a big uh, round timber that went across each side with big uh, anchors going down through, and they were holding the, the, the rails underneath the bridge, and then the track was on top of them. So that was all wide open in there, and, and so it got plenty of, plenty of air to burn. And uh, once the once the roof burned off it, the sides were pretty much gone. So th that solved the problem. But that was a good hour before that really happened. You know, a lot of creosote, a lot of tar paper on the roof. Uh, a story about the roof and up above. We used to go up there. There was a walkway when I was. You know, we used to go up there and we'd train and go through. I used to play up there. Huh? I used to play up there. Yeah. And we used to catch the pigeons. Okay, the pigeons lived in that bridge. And they they got their grain from Merrick farmers, Blue Seals across the road. And that's that's why they lived there. And there was hundreds of them. And they lived in the, the, the belfry on the white school building. That was always full of them. And uh, Harry Simpson lived up on Church Street and he had a chicken house. And he had some homing pigeons. And we'd catch the pigeons. And we'd also catch some eggs, and we'd all kept take some little ones up to him, and he'd put them in the hen house and raise them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, the bridge was used for the, when you could get yourself a cigarette and go in there and hide, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who did that? Did Anybody that? here have a cigarette in there? Yeah. <laughs> and I guess probably that's, that's one of the theories of why the bridge burned. Uh, on the corners of that bridge, and you'll see today where that big arch went down on the corner in the granite. There's, there's a hole there. Yeah. When that, when the bridge was there, that was a big hole full of trash all the time. <laughs> and the, the people that worked in the mill, uh, overhead door down there, they used to go up there and they sit in the bridge and they eat their lunch, you know. Okay. You could sit on the rail in there, and the walkway was there. And you hang your feet over the side, you look down at the water, yeah. eat your lunch, and yeah. probably dropped a lot of that stuff in there, you know? Yeah. And probably had a cigarette, <laughs> dropped the butt in there, or a match, who knows, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably how the fire started. There was a guy seen at the scene that had started a fire in Manchester in a big apartment house, and he was actually in jail down at the county home. He was seen at the scene, but prior to that, they had a fire, we had a fire at the county buildings one cold winter night in the carpenter shop behind the jail burned. And he had just got out of jail and they tried to figure it might have been him, but I don't believe it was. They saw him on Mill Street that day. Yeah. The police did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. No speculating. Whatever. It's all right. What are you going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. We all have we all think we know who did. <laughs> yeah. Then the story is. Not too long ago, I heard a story. There's a few people that know how to say it. 
<laughs> yeah. Is, uh, I don't know who they are. Yeah. Yeah. And it probably was, you know, somebody that had a butt like I used to. Yeah, and they just tossed it down. Yeah. Dick, uh, I, I question for you. Uh, in, in this same time, you know, this day and time, with the newer equipment that's available up there, do you think that, that happened that, that right now that they could save the they could have saved it? Were you, your equipment was was it? Well, one of the big things I think today is that we have these big black wooden nozzles. There, you know, they have four-inch holes feeding them, yeah. and they'll put out a thousand gallons a minute, and they're in a fog. Yeah. What we had was a straight stream, and, and it really doesn't do much yeah. if you're using the straight. You gotta hit, hit the wall so it's spread out, you know. Yeah. And the thing of it is, these big fog nozzles they use today, yeah. it's just like the little ones, you know. Mm -hmm. For every drop of the water, it expands it ten thousand times. The yeah. heat, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it has has an effect of <coughs> cooling the fire faster. Plus, you know, it can reach areas and put a fog pattern between the fire and the building, mm -hmm. like bills. Today, all you could do, them days, all you could do, what we had, you'd hit the building and it would spray all over, but you had to move it away, you know? Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't yeah, as effective yeah. as these yeah. new ones. Uh, with, the, with the equipment they have today, the gallons per minute that you can flow, you know, it, it's another 500 gallons instead of 1,000. Yeah. And, and at that time, at that point in time, we didn't have enough water in the village out of a hydrant oh, yeah. to feed a truck that yeah. would flow a thousand gallons a minute, but yet the, the hydrant would only produce, you know, 600 gallons. Mm -hmm. uh, today, it's up over a thousand on Main Street, which, you know, is a good flow. But yet, for, for firefighting purposes, the insurance companies rate buildings in clusters like that. And the, and the requirements, like probably Main Street, is 5,000 5, gallons a minute. Yeah. But we had the river with dry hydrants. We pumped from the dry hydrant down by the uh, old mill. Yeah. We pumped from one by the bridge eventually. And there was one over uh, Factory Street down by the, mat, the down by the, uh, the factory there. Mm. And so, you know, we used all them plus the ones on me. I was told that the Venturi effect was um, what got the thing accelerated so quick. That being the bottom was open and it created a, a nice free burn. It's free burn, yeah. Free burn. It takes right off. Yeah. 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 If you have it in a room, you know, it, it, it doesn't get the oxygen yeah. that it needs. If you break the window, this lab will blow out at you because it ignites just like a big bomb, you know. Yeah. So, when it's confined, you can stick a nozzle in there, like a fog nozzle, and it'll go, whoosh, go right out. Yeah. If you if you're there in time, and even if it's if it's free burning, it'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have a question for Dick that uh, you're curious to know, or anything? Uh... Yeah, I, I I'm kind of curious to know then if if there's any I whether it just happened or whether there was a reason why that wind was blowing that fire directly upstream and onto my building and the others, and then all of a sudden, and it was quick, it reversed, to yeah. totally. Yeah, and it, it, one of the things was there was brands flying from that fire. They were going way down on East Union Street, and they were setting little fires along in the brush and stuff. Mm. People were down there with shoulder tanks putting it out, but up on the top roof of uh, the factory, they had some workers up on the roof with these pressurized water extinguishers putting out the brands as it landed on the roof. Mm. It probably wouldn't have set the factory on fire. But if you read the stories about fires out west, they used to have wooden shakes on the roof. And that's why the buildings would burn down. So they stopped it. <coughs> and they made them put on fire resistive shingles, right? So that stopped a lot of that problem. But today, they're back doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's legal again. Yeah. The, the railroad was in a serious decline prior yeah. to 76. Yeah. Was, was there really much railroad traffic 
in that last year before the bridge burned? It was like once a week, once a month, something like that? I think maybe two times a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes maybe less than that. Afraid, but, right? but you know, it went from the passenger trains and the coal and the grain, it brought stuff to Gosta. And then as the years went along, the train stopped the passion because everybody got a car, I suppose, after the war. But all, you know, also uh, <coughs> uh, building materials were being trucked in and trucked around, and, you know, it changed. The, the train was still bringing coal to Gostown, you know, in the late 40s, early 50s, because there was a coal gas <coughs> up there on, on Depot Street across from where the, uh, the, the sheet metal place is now. And there was a lot of coal, coal being brought in here. That, you know, when I, I can remember when I was in school, we used to, we used to take care of people's furnaces, put the coal in there for them, you know, keep the fire going. And in them days, there wasn't oil. And, and the oil delivery business didn't start in Austin until in the, in the late 40s, early 50s. And then there was only a, a few people that had it. I can remember one, my father was delivering it to Dr. Backus. And he was lugging it over with a five gallon can that he hung on the back of the truck and filling the 275 gallon tank with it. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody had range oil. A lot of people had range oil at about that time. And used to have a 50 gallon drum up on the second floor of the apartments, you know. And we lugged the five gallon cans up there and filled 50 gallon drum. <laughs> How much time did, uh, do you think elapsed before the fire department got to, like, how, how, how quickly did that go up? Like, how did you get notified? Did well, somebody called the, the, the dispatch center. Okay. 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 I have to say that if I was to put a time frame on it, I'll bet that fire had been burned for 25 minutes, oh. for 30 minutes, before oh, so anybody that, really called it in. Oh, wow. It was probably smoke. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was down in the heavy beams, <clears throat> they don't ignite very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know it, it had to be going 20 minutes to 30 minutes before we ever really got there. And then after we got there, you know, it's another 10 minutes before you set up and get the water flowing. <laughs> you know, you, you do what you do with what you have, and you go in. Curious thing about it, it was coming out of both ends. Oh yeah, it was boiling right out. Why do you figure, you know, it just smoldered and kept spreading, you think? Or well, it, it probably finally got on the boards on the outside. Right. And then, you know, it really yeah. took off because they were only, you know, half inch. Yeah. And they were all gray weathers, you know, yeah. dried out. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a hot day. It was a hot day. It wasn't, it was probably 80, 85, you know. There wasn't much wind, <laughs> but the wind is created. To a lot of that wind is created by the fire. That's what I want Bill was saying. Maybe, yeah. maybe it created its own wind so it shifted or something. Yeah, and, and there probably was a little breeze, and you know, that plus the little breeze changed direction still once in a while. The fire will change the direction of the, you know, where it's going. Just the swirl and the, you know, the way the oxygen gets to it. You know, I don't think anybody can really say that, that, uh, Firefighting is, you know, it's, you can learn about it, you can do it, but there's times you don't know what's happening. You have to try to figure it out, you have to, you know, try to outsmart it, I guess you could say. And I, I, I can just say, I can remember one time, and I'd heard about it, there was a house on fire, completely involved. I mean, coming out all the windows, even in the second story. And I heard about a, a system they had where They'd back a truck up there with a big piece of four inch hose and a big black little nozzle. And they, you know, it would, it would deliver 2,000 gallons a minute. And the water was gone. Either they put it out or they didn't. And I can remember one time when we had a building like that and I tried that and within a minute it was out. Just went through one window. But you know, that's, that's a chance you take. You know, it's out in the rural area, there's no water. Yeah. You used all your water. <laughs> so what, what time of day was the fire? 
Oh, I'd say it was like 10 30, quarter of 11. Oh, was it out during the week? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't remember what day it was. But oh. It was the sixth, it was 16th of, of uh, August, yeah. 1976. Okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> it, was, it was August 16th, 1976. I just didn't know what time. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I couldn't really say it. Probably 10:30, 12. Right, so and it was it was 1:30 before we actually could close the lines down. Just yeah. something to eat. We never got out until five o'clock. So, uh, Richard, why were you in the center of town? Because you were there before the truck. Did you work in the center of town? Well, yeah. Okay. I was at the station. Okay. Yeah. Which was the headquarters, still is, you know. So all I had to do was go down the road, turn the corner. When I come out of the station, you see the smoke. So, you know, when I got there, I'm telling you, the fire was boiling right out, of, right out of the peak of the roof. You know, just boiling right out. So, you know, it didn't just stop. <laughs> it had been going a while. So they never considered building it because there was no purpose to rebuild it? Well, they looked into rebuilding that bridge, yes. and they found out the cost was so astronomical that it just went away. Unfortunately, were coming in, it was not lucrative for the town, and because they had a committee set up that did uh, indeed. Uh, there was a bridge just like that, you know, that burnt in the Panadol area. It's actually in Manchester, but if you look at the trestle across oh, from the, 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 MSC, uh, the uh, Kelly Falls Bridge, yeah, right? yeah. if you look down it, you'll see it. That's the one that they're going to put the bridge over for the rail trail. Oh, so okay. maybe one thing good about this whole thing in the end, right, the rail trail can use the railroad bridge. The other bad thing is that if that bridge had been there, you had a walkway right through it. Nice wide way to ride your bike through it, you'd be right in the middle of town. Yeah, I, uh, I was chairman of the committee for the reconstruction of the bridge. Elma Nickerson was on the yeah. committee, and John Pelton and Kerber. It was, we, uh, we, we looked, we exhausted every avenue for help and uh, um, grants and all, all over the country. And uh, it was about 500,000, which back then wow. was a lot of money to reconstruct that and rebuild it. Yeah, and uh, John Webster, of course, was one of our biggest supporters. He owned uh, Overhead Door. And yeah, and Kendall Hadley. And he got a lot of lumber through. Well, that, and yeah, but what I realized after was that we were being sabotaged by B and M. This was a losing effort oh, for them. Yeah. They didn't want that bridge put back in because they had one customer, John Webster, and they had to run and deliver a couple times a week uh, on that, and it was a losing thing for them. So, because they, yeah. They did uh, still continue to deliver lumber, I think, to the overhead door factory after that for a while. Well, they tried to truck in, but it was too yeah. expensive. It, that's really what put them out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Kendall Hadley. Kendall Hadley, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who's used to drive trains of that? How many saw the bridge burn that day? They used to tell me all the time. The front person. Well, you know, Barbara had a, Barbara's father was a fireman. Barbara's father was a fireman when my father was a fire chief in Gostown. And then days it wasn't full time. It was during the war years. And they had red phones. And he had one in the station. And everyone in the house was always ringing. They'd go out. They'd go out at night. Well, Fred's father's place burned. I remember that on a cold winter night. Well, isn't that where your your, your stepfather lived? Or? Oh, you're talking about uh, Jenny. The old, the old. Uh, yeah, the, old the old house burned. Yeah, remember? The old house. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and they didn't have radios. And they didn't even have a cab on on the old sea grade. You know, it, it was the night that it was 20 below zero. And they left, you know, at midnight. I can remember them going. And they got back, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, they didn't have no communications. People were calling them, but they, you know, wanted to get them, but they couldn't yeah. communicate with them. Yeah. 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 I wasn't living there at the time. So, but I was, so I thought you were talking about maybe later on. 
No, no, no. I had a building burn. Yeah. You, you had a house? Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Burned, uh, burned half down one time, and then the next time the whole thing burned. Is that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were doomed. Yeah, Earl, uh, Earl yeah. Newboy. Yeah. Remember when the whistle would blow, you'd know yeah. by yeah. the number of people yeah. where it was. Yeah. 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 You're going to get your pennies up that was, on the rail. When I first yeah. came by to you, we had the fire alarm whistles to blow the whistle right in the fire station. Yeah. When we closed the station down at 6 o'clock, then it went to uh, a private house. They got the, they got the call. They put the numbers on. Yeah. It was just a sub pen to the main fire alarm system. But there was numbers, and that old board, I don't know if it's still the fire station or not, but it had all the numbers and all the box numbers. Yeah. And yeah. they blow it, like, for school being out. Yeah. Uh, it had a number for emergencies. Yeah. Everybody's supposed to come. Yeah. 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 You're you talking about riding bicycles in that bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I was forbidden. <laughs> as a youngster, by my mother, yeah, right. I oh, ever so ride my bicycle. She probably told you my smoke cigarettes. So you said, oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I was, I was doing it. I came out through the bridge, and there she was, right <laughs> next to the block, right. And she couldn't have been in a worse place. I lost my bike privileges for a month. Yeah. <laughs> I probably would have been father and caught me up on the walkway. In the we get up there one time, the train's coming through, you know. Black smoke. <laughs> we used to fish out there. That, oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody fished in there. Yeah. 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 How about who put their name in there with white chalk? Huh? Everybody had your name, and they, 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 who could climb the highest? Yeah, I knew that. Bert used to hang out at the top of the Have you ever read the story that Doug Gold wrote about? The bridge fire. What? Well, it's in this book. It's the third one, I think, isn't it? Yeah. It's the third book. Yeah. And uh, it's on. It starts on 68, I think it is. But <laughs> he was interviewing me. He did Bill. He did Peter Jenkins. And uh, it tells about you know battle in the blaze. Whatever. In the end. Uh, Peter Jenkins said, uh, uh, he added these colorful words, the thing that made fire so, so spectacular was that the fire was suspended in the air, and when a fire of that magnitude burns, Doug, who he's talking to, the heat goes up, which is thermal column of heat, and then He said, there was a certain amount of disappointment for the firemen. The good news was that we saved the Burns building, but the bad news is that we lost the bridge that we had all walked through and was part of our life. It's not like you're losing your home, but it's losing a piece of your history. You missed out, you know. Swole to catch his words, I question. Missed out on what? To which he successfully replied, if you don't kiss someone, someone sweetheart in that bridge, you missed out. I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the little story about it, pretty much what we said tonight. You know, it, it, it was the only thing I didn't know that Pete ran into you. Oh, I told you to get out. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get the key. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the door wasn't locked anyways. Oh yeah, it was, was locked. It? Yeah, yeah. It didn't take him about a moment. Though, I wonder it. if he tried the door before he did that though. Because I, I know guys that tried the door, that, well, excuse me, that didn't try the door, they got the axe and go and smash it down. Wait, wait, wait. Try the door first. The door yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm going to test it.
asked everybody here. Well, I got a few things. Uh, I want to know who put, whoever put a coin on the on the on the rail and watched it get squished. Me, me, me. And you heard it coming. That's the first thing you did. You get the quarter. You put it on the end. So that was always fun. I did that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and you have all these flattened quarters, and yeah. that's what we would do, sitting and we'd wait in the bushes, and we could hear it coming. And you, you, you had to go quick so that he didn't see you, you know, the engineer. Um, anybody here ever ride the excursion train through the bridge? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, a few people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you went right through the bridge, and was it neat? I just. Yeah. 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 One question that I, I know we already asked was that the, the guilty of smoking a cigarette in there. Oh, you know, there. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say to Jerry, my grandfather was on the bicentennial committee. Okay. I tried to get one of the B-15 BM steamers for that ride. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. To Manchester and back. Uh, if you were there that day, I ask you, what were your feelings watching your bridge burn? Were you angry? Did you feel sorrow? Or were you scared? I know there's a few hands here. Uh, and did you really, did you feel like the fire department was going to save it and there was not to worry? That was the... Not a chance. Not a chance. Yeah. Sad. I'd say. I'd say sad. I mean. Uh, yeah. Uh, favorite memory of the covered bridge. I think everybody kind of got a little something there. You know, climbing. Yeah. 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 Who put their tongue on the track in the dead of winter? Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 He worked in the station, and he had a Dodge, two-door sedan. He took all the tires off one night, put it on the rail track, and went to Manchester. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Who was that? Who was that? Huh? Give me. Oh. Elfin Gibbs. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he worked for Clint uh, 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 Smith at the Mobile Station. Yeah. Yeah. So he had, you know, he had the had the tools to take the tires off. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody hasn't seen up here, we do have a piece of a bridge that was saved right here, and uh, it's on display. This is one of the only pieces around. I don't think there's many others uh, there, but here's a great picture. If you want to come up. Piece of the track we have on display up here, the actual track from the from the train trestle, and then some good. Uh, obviously, the Gosstown sign over there that was rescued. Gosstown News. Yep, we've got the 1976 Gosstown News. If you want to come through there, anybody have any other questions for Dick? Yeah. Dick, uh, question. Um. The replica of, of the bridge. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. The train room is open if anybody wants to go in there and take a look at that. Yeah. Last week I was in Katooka <laughs> and I went by that train bridge in Katooka. It goes across the room, it? and I looked on the front of it and I saw this great big fire department connection. They, they apparently sprinkled it. So if they had a fire in it, they could drive up with the whole thing. Plus, they had an alarm system. It's so right across the street from the yeah. Yeah. So a lot of them old bridges, you know, there's been a lot of them burned over the years. Was that a dead end track? I've never been up the other end of it. 
It went up through New Boston, okay. and it went up through where? Into Hanukkah, the hill of the world. Uh, went all the way to Hanukkah? No. Yes. Hanukkah. Yeah. Went to Hanukkah. Yeah. Yeah. From there, it must have gone to Hillsborough. Yeah. Or it may have split, I don't know. And I, I, always thought, I always thought it went up so far that it's just stopped. I don't, it went to New Boston. Uh, Went to Riverdale, because on Depot Street was the Depot. It was a spur, yeah. about 200 yards over, and the spur yeah. went to New Boston. Yeah. 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 That one went beyond. It ended, that yeah. one ended at New yeah. Boston. Because yeah. the, main, the main line There's two ahead. stations, one's the Lang Station, That's and then Boston. there's one in New Boston. Uh, there was a station across here. There was a station down at they just packed. That station, went to Sherman. Bedford, yep. and there was a station at, at uh, Davis Park on the railroad that came up here. Well, I guess it was above Davis Park on it. But then up, maybe it was up by the home gas plant. Wasn't there a station down back of the county farm? Yes. Yeah. Davis Park, right? The one it was down Davis yeah. Park. It was right. It was, it was this side of. Uh, Davis Pike Road with the lights out. It was coming this way, I think it was right there, because if you follow the bypass, 114 bypass, you follow it right alongside. Right, not many, not many people realize it, but when you get to that Danish Park intersection, uh, it actually, the, 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 um, the depot was down in Danish Park, and the train went right under Mass Road. The next time you're at that intersection down there, just before you see Century 21, look to your left, and you're going to see a huge gully there. You'll see the tops of trees. And the reason you're seeing the tops of trees is because that it was quite a dip down under there, and the train went right under Mass Road and headed towards Bedford. And not many people realize that, and, they, and when they, they eventually just filled it all in. But when it came up to Danish Park, it went under Mass Road, right along 114. Yeah. The spur, the spur. Not the main line. Right, the one that went to Bedford, went right underneath the Mass Road. Yep. Did that stop in Bedford? No, it continued beyond. Went to Milford, right? Yeah, went to Milford. Okay. Any other questions for Dick? I, I wanted to also remind people that the Mass Road was not the only line that went through the Mass Road. Yeah. Yep. That's where the train stopped and the people got on the people trolley to the Yep, right. They went up on the mountain. Yep, yep. That station, I don't know when that was taken down, but you can still see where it was down there. Where was that? Where Shirley was Station, Jim, you turn on the Shirley, yeah. um, right across from the, um, the Wallace Road. Yeah. It's just, there's a, you go down there and there's a little rise and then you pitch over, it was right there to the okay. right. Okay, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, let's give Dick a round of applause.